Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're having a wonderful day. After many play sessions, probably already too many, uh, it's finally time for me to review Batman Gotham City Chronicles by Monolith. If a game can give me a cow with a cape on it, surely it has to be good, right? Alright guys, now real quick before I get into all the pros and cons of the uh, game itself, at least my view on it, as I always do in these review videos, I just want to do a quick shout out to all my patrons. You guys rock and make this all possible. I did three videos this week, in case you didn't notice. I did a painting video that took me a couple hours to do, and then obviously a couple hours more to edit. I did a Kickstarter video where I did a whole bunch of research to work with a few companies to try and get that out to you guys so I can give you my... Uh, opinions on some of those and of course now a review after many many play sessions of Batman. So anyway if you appreciate that at all or any of the other past uh, videos or looking forward to some of the future videos of mine and found them at all helpful or enjoyable be sure to give this video a thumbs up it helps out the channel a lot subscribe if you haven't already for those kind of videos obviously that helps and if you're really really awesome and able to Link in the description below to my Patreon for all sorts of rewards like a Discord and painting and miniatures and early videos and exclusive videos and behind the scenes stuff and all that's jazz. Alright, let's get to the review. Now the first things first, I cannot talk about this game without talking about the amazing artwork in it. The core boxes alone are amazing. Monolith once again did a full art on their boxes to where not even their logos on there on the front. It's just the artwork and it's beautiful artwork. They actually commissioned it from an amazing artist. I don't remember their name right now, and I apologize for that. In fact, if I can, I'm going to put it in text somewhere on the screen right now because I would love for you guys to know. It's really, really good stuff. They have a great Instagram account as well that I follow. And uh, I, I must say, I really like the how the two core boxes, the art works like that. I have it all up on my shelf, all pretty and whatnot, and I really, really enjoy it. And it's not just there. The art keeps going further. So even the uh, character... Uh, screens that you have, especially for the heroes, but also the villains, are actually what they did is they took the 3D sculpt and then colored it. And what that means is it always perfectly matches the miniature, which is very, very nice. Now, it's obviously a different style than the uh, commissioned work that they did, but I must say I still really like it, and I love all the bright colors and the, the clean look. In And the art, I feel, even goes to, like, the technical document, the rule book itself. They do a lot of uh, stark white in their rule books lately, at least with Claustrophobia, and then again here with uh, the Batman Gotham City Chronicles. And I must say, I actually really dig the style. It's really clear and concise and just looks good. And then on the character sheets, they do like this blue tint, like this, the character board of this whole thing is like part of like Batman's tech and you're seeing all the info that he has on these people. It's just, it, it's all really, really well themed and really well done. And I really like it. Now, another nice thing about those boxes is it has room for storage. So it's all really well stored. I store it upright, and there's not a whole lot of movement around. Uh, the the worst thing I have right now is the uh, villain tiles. And even then, that's because I'm putting it in the villain box, where I could actually put it in the hero box just fine. Uh, so it doesn't handle sleeved cards in the actual tray they have, but there's not a whole lot of trays that aren't for the miniatures that are also separately boxed with an image of where everything goes. So it's pretty easy to find out, too. The shapes are pretty nice. There's not a whole lot of overlap involved there. Um, and, and so it just stores very, very well. What you can do is you can either take out the, the uh, tray where the dice and cards come in and then put it all underneath. There's plenty of space there. And then if not, you can actually, I have the tray still too, and it's shoved in there. For sleeved cards, I actually just put them in the tray slots, uh, you know, stacked up instead of on their side or something like that. Works out fine for me. Now, I know I was singing praises about how the rule book looked before, and it does look great. However, I do have a few problems with it. First of all, I'm sure you can guess it, but there is no index. Again, no index. Why? I don't know. You spent a wonderful amount of time writing this overly wordy rule book, which I'll speak about that in a second, and there's no index. So if I want to look up something like the size index or the menace index of something, I can't because there's no index in the back of the rule book to, to list side index mentioned on page 47. That would be great or whatever, right? Instead, I have to just hope I can find it under like hindering in the table of contents or something like that, which again is all broken down and not necessarily alphabetical order. And so it, it just, yeah, there's a lot of looking through the rule book and this game is more complex than Conan. It's, it's, if you know Conan, you're still going to be learning new stuff. Stuff works different and has changed and you're going to have to look through it. And without an index, 
even if you do find it, you don't know if that's the only place it's mentioned. Maybe size index is mentioned somewhere else. Like maybe it's like, oh, I read it under hindering, but then under ranged attacks, maybe it's mentioned somewhere else. And it says a little, you know, note that I need to know. I don't know that as a reader because there's no index unless I read through it all over and over again and just have it memorized or something like that. So you kind of have to make do. And that's kind of unfortunate. And an index would solve all that. So again, if the game does not have an index, you will get a negative mark on my video. That's all there is to it. Put an index in your rule book. Okay, now I got a little I got a little sidetracked there with the index, and I apologize for that. It just mm, mm. anyway. The rule book itself answers a lot of questions, and it's much better than the Conan one, and I really like that. However, in fact, they do but they break it down, which is kind of nice. Um, when it comes to like timing, which helps in a lot of situations. That being said, it can be fairly wordy. And what I mean by that is the movement system in this game is not that complex. It's a pretty straightforward movement system. However, it takes a hefty amount of reading to read about the movement system. And even then, it's kind of like organized weird. Like if you read it and didn't really understand the context too much, like if you hadn't played Conan before, and you hadn't read a review and you're just reading it, it almost seems like, because there's only one sentence at the very beginning of this long spiel about movement that kind of mentions the fact that you're selecting you know, a move it could have multiple movements, but it makes it seem like you take it and then you take your destination, which in your mind destination is where you're wanting to go, which is probably a few steps away, a few spaces away, and then calculate the movement based off that. So it almost seems like you teleport there. Like all that matter is your start and your end. And really what it is, is you have a multiple start and ends over and over and over again. And I just feel there's better ways to describe that. And that's kind of a good way of viewing all of the rules here. Um, Conan was too brief in their rule book, and I feel that now that they've done this kind of 2.0 on the river system and with the tile activation and all that kind of stuff, which is great, they, they, they overinflated it. And it's a little too wordy for my, for my taste. Um, you kind of can get lost in each individual rule, and, uh, sometimes it's just kind of overly complex. And other times it's just, uh, you know, like, like if you're having to, you know, view e evasion or something like that. Uh, so evasion says you just subtract the, the, uh, the size index or whatever menace index of the, of, uh, you know, uh, whatever X is, whatever value you have. But it's worded in a way to where it says index is. And so then you're thinking maybe like, oh, so I subtract, if you have a level one evasion, I subtract all indexes of one. When really, because one is the most common value there, when really it means it, what, however many index amount is uh, is listed. So you subtract one index, uh, but the index is implies plural, yet the most common number is one. And so there's still a lot of confusion about a lot of the rules. And some of that comes from the translation. Speaking of which, there is French in, even in the English book. Some of the examples have French. One of the title headers is actually in French. So there's a few interjections of non-English stuff there. And then again, some of the translation, you know, like the indexes and stuff like that, make it a little kind of odd um, when you do that. Some other minor things like on one of the maths uh, they do a lot of math, which is nice. It's like you take your enemy and then you subtract the, the ally and that's the difference or whatever. But one of them, it just says ally minus ally. So it's like this, the same number to be zero every time. It, it, some of it, it, it could just use a little bit more proofreading, a little bit more conciseness and index and, you know, just some, maybe some better examples or something like that. So the rule book, it's better, could have a lot of improvements. So I'm going to put it as a negative on this one, though I do really like the improvements that I've seen from previous games. Okay, so apparently I could talk about rules for forever. I apologize for that. Maybe we should put that towards the end of the video. You're like, he's going to complain about the indexes for like 10 minutes. I don't know. But anyway, one of the big things that I really like is the components with an exception which we'll get to as a negative later. But the component, just the, the boxes are really nice. Uh, they got a good gloss to it. They scratch a little easy for my taste, but you know, it's it's a it's a box. It is what it is. It doesn't have that like linen finish or something really rugged like that. The cards seem nice. The tokens, Monolith is the leader in cardboard tokens as far as I'm concerned. They are exquisite. They are amazing to punch out. They are amazing to use. The tiles are perfect in almost every way and I love them. Cardboard is awesome. Miniatures, great detail. Uh, you know, a, a, a few mishaps, you know, a, a few, the hands are really small and so the detail's barely there. Some eye sculpts that don't quite take paint perfectly, but otherwise the detail level is fantastic and I'm happy with those. 
uh, and, and the, the gems are good. They didn't use the, uh, the gems like you get in Claustrophobia or from Conan. They used just like the square gems. Those are fine, though. They work great. And in fact, they're a little bit easier just because they're square. They sit nicer and whatnot. They don't roll around quite as much. All around, great components. Really happy with it. The game board, amazing. I didn't mention that in the art, and that was a mistake. The art on the game boards is the best, and I love it. Fantastic art on the game boards as well. And uh, obviously the quality is, is mm, exquisite. It's, it's fantastic stuff. Now I mentioned an exception there, and that's the bases for the miniatures. So during my unboxing, if you watched that, you would have seen plenty of bent miniatures. If you've seen any of my painted miniatures I've done, I'm able to paint them up because they're great quality, but then they all have this wobbly base half the time. I say it all and half the time. Really, it it it's it seems about 50% of the bases are bent in some way, and bent bases suck. I'd rather have a bent anything than the base. Because that because ideally it has to be perfectly flat. If you have a bent spear or a bent sword, you can get it just about close enough and it'll look fine, right? It doesn't have to be that perfect, super edge line straight, but a bent base makes it wobbly. A bent base is noticeable. A bent base sucks. So, Monolith, what I want from you is ABS plastic straight bases from now on. That'd be amazing and I'd love you for it. It'd match the rest of your amazing content and the quality and production value in there. Uh, let's get those bases straight and I'll be a happy camper. All right, so here's something else I like and that's all of the content. Now I went all in on this and so I have a ton of content. So much so that I'll probably be playing it until season two comes out and I'll have even more to play, probably. But there are a lot of scenarios here and all the scenarios just act so different. They just, they, they seem to be themed very well in the Batman IP. They're steeped in it. I mean, all of the special rules per scenario really change things up a bit. The objectives make sense. They're all varied. And if you play them in order, like I've been doing, you get a good change of pace of what it is you're trying to do. You know, some you might just be trying to like, you know, go through the sewers and disarm bombs and other ones. Maybe you're trying to like, you know, you have to like get contaminated and then get a serum and then, or, and then get the, uh, you know, uh, cure for it very quickly. And then there's a, you know, a, a big guy rampaging through and the best way to get rid of him is actually to get him with the serum. And there's just a lot of really fun things that you do in the scenarios. And there's plenty of them. There's a lot of content here. And finally, all of the miniatures are used in all of the, the scenarios, which is great. There's no unused miniatures here. Though some are only used once and that's a big bummer. But between the Overlord website that Monolith runs where free scenarios will be uploaded and then of course season two stuff and then of course you can just make your own and there's this going to be, there's a magazine that they run that also has more, there's going to be a ton of scenarios for this, a ton of content and I really, really like that. Now additionally, one of the benefits here, if you are a player from Conan and you're thinking about this Batman for season two or something like this and that's why you're watching the review, know that one of the big changes they did is to make it to where you can pick your characters now within options and that keeps it really balanced which is really good and in fact i belong to this discord where we've been running numbers on how balanced it is and it's literally like hovering at the 50 percent on whether or not the villain or the heroes win which is fantastic we're really impressed with that so far obviously we're going to keep digging into it but i'm really happy to see that and that's what it feels like too it feels very balanced but anyway you get you know like three heroes each so this is only a four player game not a five player game okay so there are three heroes at all times plus well Actually, I don't know if at all times. I believe it, uh, there's a few, if I leaf through there, where there's less. But anyway, up to three heroes against a villain player. So four players. But each of those hero slots, you can pick between different ones. So let's say one maybe always is Batman, but it's different versions of Batman. And one, it's like maybe you can have Bluebird and maybe Catwoman or maybe Nightwing or maybe one of the Robins. Uh, and so you can go there and you can theme it. You can have Batman and two Robins go through. Or maybe it's like Batman and then, you know, Catwoman and, you know, somebody else. I, it just It's really cool that you can pick different characters and it adds a lot to the replayability. So first of all, there's always different ways to go about it. And some of that's from the utility belt where you get to pick items. So if you pick the grapple hook and explosive gel, maybe your strategy is to jump up somewhere and explode the wall and get to the item that way. Maybe another one, you just pick the heavy hitters and you just fight your way through. So depending on what you pick, before the game even starts, it really changes how that scenario plays. So not only do you have a lot of scenarios, but they're all replayable in, in, in like in a good way. Not like a, I mean, I guess you can replay it. It seems like you could fundamentally enjoy yourself playing the same mission again, even right after 
the last one you did, whether it is because you want to start a new strategy or do new people or pick new items or whatever. And that's really cool. It's a great, great amount of content here. Now, another negative I have here is the amount of symbols and how close together they are. Now, here's here's kind of my beef here. Uh, you have, let's say, Circular Strike, Combo, and Berserk, and uh, I don't know if there's a, there's another one, I think, even two on top of that. Uh, Counterattack. Okay, so there are four um, symbols. It's just a symbol on the character card uh, that have fists as an icon and some it's like there are two fists going and some there's a third fist coming and some there's a fist and a swipe and then some there's just a fist and while eventually you get to know what they are it's very symbol heavy and this is an example of one of them where it's just there are a ton of symbols in this game especially on a character card where even even after playing almost you know like about half a dozen i want to say i've played about six times now maybe not either way I've played plenty of this, and we're still looking it up every single time when you go to pick out, especially new characters, like, well, okay, what does this one do again? Or or I'll be looking at it, I'll be like, I'm, I'm trying to like look at it, it's like, are there three fists there or two? Are they swiping? Or is one a fist and one that? I, you know, I need to look it up and see if that's counterattack. Now, not only that, but to look it up, looking it up is alphabetical by its name, but on the character card, it's just a symbol. So even if I think it's counterattack, I have to look at counterattack to see if it is. I can't just or just look for the symbol. And if it's not, then I have to look and find wherever it is it's listed, which is a huge bummer. It takes longer than it should too. Ideally, what it would have, because they all have a unique name anyway, is a list of names. And you could have done it in the theme too, right? You could have had the list and it's like, oh, and then there's stats and it says, you know, how old they are, how much they weigh, all that kind of silliness. And then skills and under skills, it would list it you know, counterattack, you know, um, berserk, you know, circular strike, all these kind of different ones. Um, the gun ones are bad too. It's like some bullets are this way, some a bullets hitting it, some it's just a bullet. What's the difference? I don't know. You got to look it up each time. And there are better ways to do it. So I would much, much, much prefer just the names because then, you know, oh, they have counterattack and all that. Instead of they have this symbol, this symbol, this symbol, this symbol is a one-to-one -to, -one to this and this is what this means. It, it just, it would be way better with the names in there. That would be awesome. And I would be so happy if they did that. Um, but it's not. And so that's super, super symbol heavy, which is kind of a bummer. Um, and definitely not a part of the game I enjoy. Speaking of symbols, they updated the active and uh, resting uh, way you mark that now. So in Conan, you put a gym on two different slots. On this one, you essentially just have a token that you flip, which I actually like. I like that concept. In practice, though, it, it really sucks because you have the character game board, and then you you put on the character sheet on the game board, and then on top of the character sheet that's on top of the game board, you have the token that you're supposed to pick up and flip. The problem is this is barely there, so it just slides around. So half the time when you're moving gyms or you bump the table or whatever, and your token is sliding around, it's not locked into place or anything. Ideally, each game board would have had a little slot where you could put a gym in, a little red gym, just like how you track health for the villains. So in the villains, they have a, a, a track that's just one through nine, I believe, and you put the gym where it belongs, and you just take it out and put it somewhere else if it needs to go somewhere else. One of the benefits of the square gyms, they just sit there, right? So they could have had two slots right underneath that had act, you know, act resting and active or active and resting. And you just swap that. I would much prefer that because then it's locked in there. It's obvious what you choose. It's not just token floating around in your game sheet. And it's the only token you float on there too. It's just, it's just an odd system. And I don't know why they did it that way, but I think it could use some improvement. Now, yet another complaint I have here is it can be kind of confusing for people who didn't go all in or that did. And the problem is, because this is Kickstarter exclusive, because they made this entire game kind of as one thing, they actually put some tokens in the core box that are only for expansions, or mentioned in expansions. So there were several components I had where I was like, I don't know what these components are. There's no component list in the rulebook, another negative on the rulebook, show me an image with titles of this is this, this is that, this is that, so that I know how much it is. You can't just say... Uh, you know, uh, you know, 24 health trackers. Well, show me what the health trackers are, right? Uh, because that, that would have helped solve this. But the problem is some of these tokens aren't mentioned in the rulebook because the rulebook is meant for the core game. And these tokens that are in the core game box are for an expansion you might not own, or in my case, have not read yet because I'm not playing that yet. I'm playing through the core game first. 
So I have no idea what these are. So I'm like, did I miss something? I wasted way more time than I care to admit reading through that very wordy rule book, trying to figure out where these symbols were. Uh, I, so some specifics. Uh, there's a, um, a, a different token that covers up um, some of the armor rerolls and the villain board from four slots to three slots. It's used for the versus box, but it's not in the versus expansion. It's in the core expansion, but only used for the versus expansion. Again, kind of confusing. I've seen many people ask that. Luckily, I'd seen that question before I got my copy, and so I already knew that. But one I did have a question for is there was like some generic um, health tokens. Again, it's not listed anywhere. It's not shown anywhere, uh, but it is mentioned in the Batmobile expansion where it says, hey, use this to, you know, track its health or whatever. Well, okay, that's great, except it's in the core box, not the Batman expansion. So I didn't know. So I had these symbols. I'm like, I don't know what these are. There were three of them. They were obviously for, they were blue. It's, I think the other side may have been gray, but it looked like it was for the heroes. Like maybe the heroes track something. I don't know. So I'm sitting there. We're trying to play our first game and I'm just Googling, trying to, and looking through the rule book and asking on this discord, like, Hey, what are these symbols for? Cause I'm just trying to play the game. And so it's just kind of confusing that they did that. Either, either list everything that's in the box or keep the boxes separated or what it was just it was rather confusing and wasted a bit of my time okay so i already mentioned balance but i want to speak a little bit more about that because i think it's one of monolith's strong suit i've yet to play a monolith game actually that wasn't well balanced and that's saying a lot uh mainly because there's a lot of times where i can't play to my full potential what i mean by that is i am normally the most well-versed gamer in my group uh hence why i run a whole channel on this this stuff but uh, oftentimes they play the bad guy, the overlord, the nemesis, the villain, whatever you want to call it in these one versus many games. And because you're having to track, uh, you know, a bit more. And oftentimes I have to not play the optimal move or, you know, not pick the optimal set because, oh, that would, that would be kind of broken. I can go all out on monolith games and really try to win. And sometimes I do. And sometimes I don't. Sometimes I get beat bad. Uh, and that's really cool. Um, that that works. And oftentimes you can, you can f point at where the issue is. And oftentimes it comes down to like one turn, which is really exciting. For instance, we've just played a, uh, a mission where we, ha uh, the heroes had to like activate five tokens. I forget what the tokens stood for exactly in this one, um, by turn, by the end of turn seven. And so we were running through that and they were like, it was getting close. It was like turn six at the start of turn six. And they saw they're like, okay, we got to like get these last few ones and it's a mad dash to that and whether or not they can succeed or not. And that's exciting. It brings so much excitement when it gets down to the wire, when it's not clear who's going to win. It's not like playing Risk where halfway through the game of Risk, you know who's going to win. It's not like that at all. Even if you don't think you're going to win, they didn't. Within my first turn, I had almost killed Nightwing. And so it was looking grim. It was looking bad, but they were able to recover. And that's fantastic. So it looks like, you know, most games you just throw in the towel, like, oh yeah, that ended up terrible. That did not work. But in this one, no, it's well balanced. And there's a lot of great, great times with that. And so I really like the balance of this game. Speaking of balance, I really like the dice mitigation in this game. As a terrible roller myself, I need all the dice mitigation I can have, or at least as much control as I can over it. Um, now the heroes have a bit more than the villain because they can actually pump up their attacks, which is great. I wish I could do that, but sadly I can't. But you know, so if, if you're like, Hey, I need to get five on this roll and I could roll two red dice, which gives me either I could roll five or a six and win, or I could put that extra gem in there and roll three red, or maybe I do the two red and then put that gem in a re-roll. So I have a higher chance of getting it. So you can add dice, you can re-roll dice. They also added some great dice, which I like. My favorite is the black dice. So in this one versus Conan, they had black dice, which is a 50-50. So three uh, sides are completely blank. They're a miss. And three sides actually hit. Now, not only that, but one of them hits for a one, so it just barely hit. And two of them hit for a four, which is the highest in the game. So that that hurts, especially if you're rolling multiple of them or you get a re-roll. That's bad. And so it's that kind of like a all or nothing kind of scenario just within the dice. So the dice are just meant to kind of emulate that. And it's really good. It's really fun to do that. Um, yet white dice are kind of the opposite. They miss more often than not, but they can still hit a two. They still have a two as good as a yellow or as good as a, 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 a kind of a normal red roll. And so that's awesome that I've gotten four damage off of two white with a reroll. And so you think, oh man, it's going to be blank. And then bam, nope, actually I got four. And that's... A lot of good dice mechanics in this game, which as a fan of rolling dice, I'm happy about. 
Now, I also already kind of mentioned the utility belt, the bat utility belt mechanic in this game, but essentially all the people of the bat family, so not everybody, but the people of the bat family get a utility belt value. And what you can do is you can pick from the all these cards that do different things and make that part of a utility belt. And what's really great about that is it allows you to adjust to the situation, make up for a, a weakness of something, or um, perhaps it's actually helping with the campaign, or perhaps it's playing to your strengths. There's a lot of different personal personalization you can do. So even if you pick the same characters, if you change the utility belt, it changes a lot about how you would play. And that's really cool and really exciting. And there's a lot of, like, it's not deck building, but there's a lot of kind of strategization about, okay, well, if I do Nightwing and he's already doing this, perhaps I add another, for instance, okay, so Nightwing, he had two, like, stun batons or whatever. So do this electricity damage, which is great, right? And he's ambidextrous, so he can attack with both. Well, there's also a utility card that can add more shock to it. So maybe he just, if he gets a hit in, he's going to hit hard. Maybe he's just now the boss killer and he's just going to kill the villain. Uh, and that's awesome. You could do that. Or if not, I think he only has a parkour of one. Maybe give him the grappling hook so he has a higher parkour and he's just jumping around everywhere, hitting everybody, still doing decent damage, but you've kind of upped a weakness of his when it comes to how much he can kind of climb around and move around. There's just a lot of stuff like that. Maybe make him a bit more defensive with a back cape. Maybe it just... There's a lot of options there, a lot of uh, theory crafting you can do, and you can change it per scenario to really match. Now, additionally, there's a lot of times where an opportunity arises or like, this is a perfect time to use this. Like a boss comes in and he's just like, oh, he's going to terror us. Well, I have an exploding batter ring that does two black dice. Platoon, you explode, you die. Okay, fun stuff. The only thing I think would be kind of fun, and I might even try it house ruled a little bit, I'm normally against that, is to keep those secret from the villain player. So what if you had the bat utility belt and you had all these tricks up your sleeve that literally up your sleeve I was unaware of as a villain player. So I'm just throwing around and suddenly out of this belt you get this perfect, you know, you know, bat item, you know, kind of like a, a joke in the 60s movie, uh, TV show, you know, or something like that. I just thought that that'd be great. And so uh, either way, I really like the system. It's a lot of fun. It's a good addition. All right, we're almost done here. I got one more positive thing to say and then we'll conclude. And that's really just the amount of support, extended support of the game. So season one has already come out. The first Kickstarter has, and it already has a ton. But on top of that, the overlord.net, where a community is going to make more, and I know they will, so we're going to have plenty of scenarios there, continuing for months or even years later, if Conan has anything to say about it. Additionally, they have this magazine, uh, I think it's called Two Now The Overlord T.O., um, that it, I, I already, I already backed it for one because it comes with uh, another, uh, uh, item card or utility card. I can't remember which one, but a card for the game. Cool. And more scenarios, more official scenarios, which means they're going to be well balanced and well made and well themed. And they're going to use all my content. There's going to be so much content for this, not, a, not even including the second season. So they're going to do another season, another Kickstarter here on June 4th, where again, even more content, you can get some of the content you didn't get the first time. If you didn't get anything, you can actually get the game. And then of course, there's the new stuff too, with even more. They, Monolith supports their games in a way I haven't really seen another company do, uh, especially when it comes to the free stuff, the community stuff and the support for that where they'll actually, you know, uh, kind of get this community stuff and get the best of it and package it and advertise it. And it just, Really cool stuff like that. Uh, they even did like a painting competition earlier where they were giving away like a mini if you won the painting competition. So you got like an exclusive version of a mini there. And just a lot of cool stuff like that. A lot of support for this game. And that makes me a happy backer and a happy consumer. It means that my $300 plus dollars I spent on this darn thing isn't a total waste and instead will give me a lot of joy for years to come. All right, so time for a conclusion. Monolith really knocked it out of the park here. While yes, it just is shy of perfection because of those complaints, at the end of the day, those complaints are in fact fairly minor. There's nothing fundamentally broken about this game at all. It's a ton of fun with a ton of content, of quality content, and I'm sure I'm going to get plenty of extra game time even after this video with my gaming group uh, for a long time to come. Monolith took what was already well-reviewed and well-regarded in Conan and made it even better, made smart and interesting decisions to improve upon that core experience. And then on top of that, added Batman into the equation. So obviously it improved. It's really, really good, and I highly recommend it to any of you out there. If you kind of align with me when it comes to the kind of games you like, if you like throwing dice, if you like moving miniatures, if you like Batman, 
In other words, if you're like me, you need to get this game. It's well worth it. A fantastic game. And uh, right now, game of the year. Uh, so we'll see if that changes. There's a lot coming out, obviously, which I will be covering in the future. So, speaking of which, if you want to see that coverage, subscribe. If you liked this review, give it a thumbs up. If you have any opinions or any questions or just want to say anything, comment below. I'll be sure to re read and respond to it. As always, thanks so much for being here. I always appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you soon.